Hi, everyone. I'm Bruno Aziz, and welcome to another episode of Data Journeys. This is where we come to learn from leaders in data, their lessons, their do's and don'ts, and their journey. Today, I have the pleasure of talking to Bala. He's the Senior Director of Data Infrastructure and Cloud Engineering at PayPal. Bala, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. Thank you very much, Bruno. Pleasure is mine. All right. Well, let's get right into it. Let's first talk about PayPal and some of the data use cases that you have. PayPal is a global uh, leader in online payment solutions with more than 350 million accounts. We operate in 202 countries and 25 currencies around the world. We enable global e-commerce by making payments possible across different locations, currencies, and languages. We are one of the largest fintech players in the e-commerce ecosystem. Due to the unique position in the market, data has always been central for both payment processing and for our offline systems. So we're talking here real-time decision-making. You're talking about serving finance, marketing, sales, just about everyone in the organization. You know, how did PayPal and why did PayPal become so data hungry? That's a great question, Bruno. Um, given that PayPal's size and the market uh, that we are serving in, some of our product analysts, financial analysts, risk processing, compliance processing, all of them require data, fast and secure access to data to make their decisions. Some of them are real time, some of them are offline. Due to this, our data volumes have grown 400% over the past two to three years. Our resource demands to process this data for critical business functions have increased 300% over the past just two years. And we spent 25% of the resources just moving data across various end systems. And this and also validate the data before we give it to our end users. So this has been a huge drain of resources across the ecosystem. This is when we started looking at cloud to see where we could optimize some of these inefficiencies. So that's great because now you're using BigQuery, Dataproc, Bigtable, Cloud SQL, PubSub, Cloud Functions. But previously you were on premise. And so with the increase of data volume and the increase of customers and number of transactions, tell us a little bit about how you handled that migration, which you executed on fairly quickly. I have to talk about uh, a recent project that my team was involved in. As I speak today, one of the Teradata clusters my team, uh, the, some of our community was using, has been completely dismantled. This cluster, as a history, was predominantly used by product and financial analytic folks. This set of users were the ones who were providing predictions, looking at the data, how our products did, and predicted what the revenues would be for PayPal. Uh, interestingly, our CEO would be getting guidance based on this, this team's work. As I speak today, this cluster not only has been dismantled, and it just took one year for us from art to part to complete this work. Last year, when COVID hit, the data volumes grew for us because there was a lot more payments than normal when COVID, uh, when the pandemic hit everyone. Now, this community was trying to figure out how our products were doing. They were also trying to provide guidance in terms of our revenues as well as our product portfolio. We realized that this cluster was not ready to handle huge workloads. At the same time, it was also not serving the business demands that these analysts were requiring it to do. So it was in June 2020 we decided that we had to move to the cloud. And it was after the Independence Day of 2020 when we decided that we'll set up a network to try some data in the cloud. So in the past one year, I'm very proud to say my team migrated, not just simply migrated, we started the evaluation process, set up the networks, secured the data, did two rounds of penetration testing, copied close to 30 plus petabytes of data. We converted thousands of workloads. We converted close to approximately give or take 800 dashboards from Tableau, streamlined the life cycle of analysts who are approximately 800 users. And we also dismantled the cluster. So this, all of this took just one year, end to end. So I'm super proud of what my team has done in the past one year. That's amazing. I mean, if you look at you know, how other companies migrate, it typically takes more than, than this much time, especially as you're experiencing growth, you have hundreds of users, and you also kind of change the way you think about the data. Can you tell us a little bit about you know, how you handle BigQuery streaming and how that's part of your architecture as well? So, uh, as I said, as we kind of did this change, we also offered Looker and we also found out some of the pipelines that was trying to get behavioral data from the site was very, very slow and our analysts did not like it. 
So the team that was moving behavioral data started using BigQuery streaming to move this data quickly into BigQuery and is now we offer that data back to our customers in less than five minutes, which was a huge change from eight hours that it takes for them to look at data today. So this is what we have been able to leverage and use the cloud for. And this has made our analyst community super happy in terms of what they see, what they are offered, and also the business agility that they're able to provide back to business. So from eight hours to five minutes, that's really quite exceptional. The agility you're going to gain uh, with just making this change. I can't wait to hear about your best practices and the worst practices. In fact, let, let's just get started with that. Let's talk about maybe the, the positive first. What would you say is the number one best practice everyone needs to consider when they're migrating to the clouds, such amazing workloads like yours? PayPal uh, has always prided in security. And that's number one in every exec's mind at PayPal. We believe in earning the trust of our customers and we never want to let our customers down. So strong, securing our data using strong authentication authorization uh, is very, very fundamental to what we did. And that's very, very important. And that's the first thing we designed into the system as we decided to move to BigQuery. So you talked about security as first principle. What does this mean? Did you have to hire new people? Did you have to employ different practices? The interesting part of our journey so far, Bruno, has been that we didn't have to hire new people. We were able to train a lot of our existing teams. They were told about the importance of securing the data. They were taught about risk management of data, and that helped us gain a lot of credibility with our community as well as our users. We put first principles. We did uh, discuss quite a bit in terms of how to secure the data. So we did adopt new practices and patterns to secure the data and offer the data back to customers. So that's great, which is build security from day one into your, your process. What about the flip of this? What is it that you would advise people need to avoid as they're migrating? Things maybe they might not think about today. We learn a lot during these large migration projects. Um, we learn in terms of uh, what to do, what not to do. But sometimes I find that teams tend to take their existing patterns and principles that they are comfortable with to the cloud. For example, they try to mirror their data pipelines um, and the experience they provide to their customers to the cloud the same way that they did on-prem. So it will be nice to think through that before um, you replicate the experience. That sometimes becomes too kludgy, too hard, and uh, it is probably not in the best interest of your business. That is something I would avoid if I do this project all over again. So try not to mirror the existing um, pipelines. Essentially, uh, nobody wants to waste the opportunity of a good transformation. And so yeah. use that as the opportunity yeah. to essentially modernize your processes as well, I'm assuming. Exactly. Well, Bella, thank you so much for your time today. I could talk to you for hours. And this was really interesting and educational for us. We learn about security as a first principle. We learn about not wasting the opportunity of a good transformation, both the physical stuff, but also the processes and the way we do uh, implement of various pipelines. You know, I want to thank you for your time today, Bala. Thank you very much, Bruno. It's a pleasure is mine. And I hope that people are going to reach out to you. You wrote a great blog that documents not just the process of migration, but also the benefits that you got from moving from on-prem to the cloud. I hope they'll reach out to you. Until next time, I'm Bruno Ziza.